Hello everyone, this is Tiago from Coderversity and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to use LinQ in C Sharp. In this video you will learn LinQ query syntax versus LinQ method syntax, filtering data with LinQ as well as projecting, sorting and grouping data with LinQ. For that we will use of course C Sharp and .NET. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. What exactly is LinQ? LinQ is a set of methods and language features that allow you to query, manipulate and transform data collections like arrays, lists and even databases in C-Sharp. It's designed to make data access simpler and more intuitive by using SQL-like syntax directly within your C-Sharp code. So, let's start with a high-level understanding of LinQ. LinQ provides a consistent way to work with different data sources, such as collections, XML, SQL databases, or even remote services, all using a similar query syntax. LinQ queries are written in a declarative way, meaning you tell C Sharp what you want, not how to get it. There are two main forms of LinQ queries, query syntax and method syntax. Both accomplish the same goals but are written differently. So, why LinQ? Before LinQ, working with different data sources like collections, databases or XML files required learning different APIs for each. LinQ unifies these under a common query syntax. This, this makes code more readable and reduces the need to jump between different APIs. LinQ is commonly used in everyday developments, whether you're filtering customer records from a database or sorting a list of objects. LinQ allows you to do it in a much simpler way than manually looping through data. So let's write an example. Let's declare here an array of numbers composed by 1, 2, 3, until 9. And then we will we'll use a simple link you query to get even numbers. So we use the from keyword num that will be our variable that will hold every single one in each iteration of number that is an, uh, the array of, uh, of integers where our num mod 2 equals 0. This means that the number is even. So the rest of the division is 0. And then we just select the num and to output the, the, the results we can do a for each the same way in even numbers. We just console.write line num. So let's actually take this and create a new project in order for us to try. So .NET new project. Let's do a, a console app. Link you console console app. In the default directory, create projects. There you go. We can eliminate this one and then we just go to the program and we put what we wrote before and then we run and then to run we just open a new terminal we go to the right folder in this case link you console app and we do .NET run and as expected, 2, 4, 6, and 8, the even numbers are written. Without LinQ, you would have to write for or for each loop while multiple conditionals, uh, with multiple conditionals to filter or select data. This adds unnecessary complexity and makes the code harder to read and maintain. Imagine manually filtering through thousands of records. LinQ saves you time and effort by condensing this logic into a single readable query. Now, lin link you query syntax versus method syntax. There are two ways to write, to write link you queries in C Sharp. 
the query syntax and method syntax. Both achieve the same results, but they look different. Query syntax is more SQL-like and intuitive, especially for developers with an SQL background, like I just did here. Method syntax, on the other hand, uses C-sharp methods like where, select, and order by to perform similar operation. Let's take a look at both. So we did this syntax, but we can also do var even numbers with method syntax. And then we just do our numbers dot where num num mod two the same operation equals zero, and we will achieve the same results. So instead of the even numbers, let's print the even numbers with method syntax, and we should have the same results. And there you go. Key differences. In the query syntax looks like SQL and is generally more readable. In the method syntax, it utilizes lambda expressions and is more compact. It's also more powerful when you start combining complex queries. Query syntax can be easier to understand for beginners and SQL experts, but method syntax is more commonly used in advanced link queue operations. In larger projects, you can mix both depending on the complexity of the task at hand. If you don't understand both syntaxes, you might limit yourself to a less power form of link queue, especially when you need more complex queries. Method syntax often supports more advanced querying features like chaining multiple operations, for example. Now, the, in, the, in the next chapter, it's filtering data with link queue. And one of the most common tasks you will perform with link queue is filtering data. Whether you're filtering a list of products by price or filtering customer records by city, link, link use where method makes this simple. So the, uh, the basic example that we just did was filtering even numbers. Now let's try uh, a bit more complex uh, filtering. So let's declare the public class customer and apply to it two characteristics, a name and the city. And then this customer will also have a list of customer, customers equals to new and let's create here three customers in which one of them will be called Alice and the city will be New York then another customer that will be called, let's call it Bob, and the city, let's say he lives in Los Angeles. And finally, a new customer called Charlie, and he is from also New York City. Then we will get the New York customers. Let's call the variable New York customers, where the complex object has city equals to New York. And then Oh, I forgot to close the parentheses here. Let's amend this as well.
Actually, this is because we are declaring the class in program. So let's create a new file for customer.cs, place it here, and then we can do this. Okay. Now we have what we want and let's just filter it and see if it prints correctly by doing var customer in New York customers to check if it's correct and only prints the customers from New York. White line customer.name. Now we do dot net run. And there's, of course, there's a comma missing. And then Alice and Charlie that are indeed the New Yorkers here. Filtering is incredibly useful when dealing with large data sets. For instance, if you're building an e-commerce application, you'll likely need to filter products by category, price or ratings, for example. Without link you, Filtering would require manually iterating over collections, adding more lines of code and making it more error prone. LinkU simplifies the process and makes the code much more maintainable. Another key feature of LinkU is projection, which allows you to transform data into different shapes or structure. The selected met in LinkU is used for this purpose. For example, if you have a list of customers, but you only want to retrieve their names instead of the, the full object, you could use select to just project the name property. So in this case, like we are doing here, the customer name, we can do it similarly, but with select. So instead of filtering with New York, let's select customers by their names and this will give you will give you a collection of the customer's name only let's call it customers names then we do like this and we see that it gives an error because what we are retrieving is a list of strings that is projected when we do the select and call only the name to create a new a new enumerable so we just need to do this and run again and it gives Alice, Bob and Charlie that is all of our customers. Projection is especially useful in scenarios like reporting where you only need certain pieces of data from a larger object. For example, in an inventory system you might only need the product name and stock quantity instead of all product details. And without link you, projecting data might require uh, separate loops or um, methods to transform data. Link you simplifies this process by providing a built-in way to project data into new formats, reducing boilerplate code. Link you also makes it easy to sort data. The order by method data uh, sort actually then the order by method sorts data in ascending order, while the order by descending sorts in descending order. Sorting is a common task in any application that handles lists or collections, and LinkU provides a very straightforward way to achieve this. So, for example, let's say that instead of projecting our uh, our customer names, let's say that we want to order by ascendingly the customers order by and we will choose the, the property that will be order ascendingly and in this case it will be the name. So this will uh, alphabetically sort the customers. Sort the customers and then we'll just print it out. Oops, sorted customers. And of course, it's not sorting correctly because it this uh, orders by name, but it retrieves us the whole uh, customer object. So we'll have to do customer.name. 
and then we have Alice, Bob and Charlie A, B, C as you can see. If we want to do the descending sort, we just edit this sorted customers descending and we do order by descending. Then we just put this in here and it should be Charlie, Bob and Alice. Exactly. So, um, sorting is essential in many applications, especially when dealing with user interfaces like product listings or customer directories, if we are, if we are using the previous example of the e-commerce. Um, and LinQ makes it easy to sort data collections, whether you're working with simple data types or, or, or complex objects. And without LinQ, Sorting would require writing custom sorting algorithms or leveraging less intuitive methods, increasing the complexity of your code. So, for the last feature of this video, let's go to grouping data with LinQ. Grouping data is another powerful feature of LinQ. The group by method allows you to group items in a collection based on a key, similar to the group by, like we can see here, clause in SQL. This is especially useful when summarizing or categorizing data. So for example, let's say that we want, let's eliminate this here and to still have our customers and say that we want to group our customers by city. And then we just do custom, oops, customers dot group by and then we do the lambda function and we want to group by city. Then, of course, to go through all of the customers grouped by city, we have a for each that we will use to go through this collection. Then, we will console dot right line and use string interpolation city and then our group that was the variable the variable name that we gave to each iteration dot key that is the key of the group so for example the group in this case will be city because we are grouping by city so here the group key gives us every city listed and we'll group the users for which we can do var customer in group and we just console dot write line the customer dot name to complement the city. So since we have Alice and Charlie from New York, we'll have from one city two customer names follow, uh, followed. And then after, after that group, we will have Los Angeles and just Bob. So let's try this. Link you, console up. Let me put .NET build because it apparently is outdated and .NET run. Why is it? Oh yeah, I didn't save the file. That was a bit newbie. So there we go. For the city of New York, we have Alice and Charlie, like we see in this collection. And for Los Angeles, we have Bob. Grouping is very commonly used uh, in reporting systems as well or dashboards. For example, you might group sales by month or customers by region to generate summaries. What can go wrong? Without LinQ, you will have to manually group items by iterating through the collection, which can become messy and error prone, especially with large data sets. You can imagine the performance degrading. And LinQ's group by method simplifies this significantly. So, to recap, in this video we covered the basics uh, of LinQ in C-Sharp, including filtering, 
projecting, sorting and grouping data. LinQ is a very powerful tool that helps you write cleaner and more efficient code. Make sure that, that you practice this LinQ feature in your own projects. Uh, I will leave you the LinQ, um, LinQ website in the description so that you can read that documentation and explore a bit more of this awesome feature. Just to show you a bit of how powerful this documentation is and to encourage you a bit, you can go to the to this page and learn.microsoft.com and get in here the for example the overview of the link you that stands for language integrated query and uh, you can check some examples uh, an overview of query expression you can all you can also um, enable link you like i said in the examples to query in memory data that simulates or uh, um, a remote database or actually if you want to use in memory data it serves as well the remote data I uh, queryable link you providers you have here uh, how to write link your queries for example you have here images that can um, give you some um, some support with very intuitive examples uh, C sharp features that, that supports link you, for example, the var implicit type variables, the object and collection initializer, the um, anonymous types, and so on. Also, you have here a tutorial that uh, teaches you from creating a new console app like we just did, creating an in-memory data source, and just use link you to make the most out of it. So you even have the code that you can copy and just see it uh, doing the magic. Then you can run the queries. It, it uh, shows you the output in the comments here. And uh, as you can see, it uses pretty much the examples that we covered in this video. So you can, you can go, you can have a lot of explore here. Let me know in the comments if you know anything more about LinQ and uh, about your projects that you applied LinQ. I'll be waiting. And that wraps up our tutorial. I hope you found these projects helpful and that you learned something new along the way. If you followed along, congratulations on completing the project. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel for more programming tutorials and projects. If you have any questions, suggestions, or just want to share your own version of the project, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and happy coding! See you in the next video!